Well, good evening and welcome to uh, part two of the 4-H Communications webinar where we are going to talk about uh, delivering a speech and demonstration tonight. And I'd like to welcome you here. Uh, my name is Tony Carroll. I'm the Extension Specialist uh, with the State 4-H Office and here in the 4-H Youth Development Area. And uh, Skylar Klingen is here with me as well and, and he's really done the bulk of the work on this uh, presentation. And Skylar is a 4-H alumni member from Steuben County and has has also served as a state FFA officer, and so his uh, knowledge and experience and uh, public speaking and demonstrations is very valuable, and he's, I appreciate him uh, being able to share his uh, talents with us this evening. If you weren't able to join us for part one uh, of, this, of the uh, presentation last week, it has been recorded and is on our website, and I'll show you where that site is here in just a few minutes. But uh, before we get started, I want to want to say thanks to Skyler for being here tonight, and uh, bear with him this evening as he gives his presentation because he's uh, starting to get a little bit under the weather uh, this evening, and so uh, and it's got him in his, in his voice. So um, not good for a public speaking event, but uh, we are going to. To move on and he's going to do well but uh, please bear with him as we, as we go through the scene. And so uh, part one that we did last week, uh, we talked about, uh, you know, the different events that we have in our 4-H communication events, uh, the, what, uh, you know, what each of them were and gave a brief description about those. Those are available on our website and you can see the address that's there uh, at the, on your screen. We also started out talking about, uh, or excuse me, Skylar started out talking about the steps to choose a topic, uh, and that topic really needs to be something that you're passionate about. And then he talked about uh, present, you know, the presentation uh, uh, and your layout of your presentation, how to write your presentation, and giving you some tips there. Gave you just some overall general tips on putting together your presentation, and really emphasized the fact that practice, 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 and do your research uh, to be able to get all the information as you can, uh, and follow the guidelines that are listed in the event descriptions and the rules. And those rules are Again, are available here on the website, uh, bit.ly bit slash 4-H communications. And so I would encourage you to go there um, sometime to, to check out those and all the resources that are there for you. And so tonight uh, we're going to be talking about our part two of this, se uh, this session. And uh, so tonight we're going to be talking and, and uh, Skylar's going to give you some tips on uh, delivery techniques, um, the importance of using voice rate and pitch, how to use uh, visual aids, and then I'm going to talk to you about the general contest layout and uh, giving you some information about judging and awards. And so then we'll open it up for questions. If you do have questions, I would ask that you type them into the chat box. And as you type them into the chat box, please make sure that it uh, says send to all participants or you can send it to the presenter, either one. But if all participants, uh, then that way everybody is going to see the question that you're sending. And remember, no question is a, is a bad question. And so if you're thinking it, someone else is probably as well. And so you can send those at any time. We're going to ha hang on to those. And at the end of our presentation, uh, Skylar and I will, will review the chat box and answer all the questions that come in. And so at this time, if you could type into the chat box for me, please, um, how many people are attending the session with you and uh, whether you're attending it as a group, uh, maybe at a fairground, or if you're attending it from your home computer, whatever the device is that you're using, if you could do that, that would appreciate, you know, that would help me um, to figure out uh, what kind of audience we're reaching tonight. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Skylar Klingen uh, to begin the presentation. Skylar. Thank you very much, Tony. I'm super excited to be here again tonight, although I'm not sure my health is entirely excited to be here tonight, but we're going to get through it all together here. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. When last time we talked about all the writing of the speech and all of that, like Tony had mentioned, so this time we're really just going to dig deep into the delivery steps and what all we need to do once that speech is kind of set up and then how do we give it to our audience. So in order to do that, the first thing that we need to know is we need to be able to know who our audience is, what age group we're talking to, what their background might be. If you're giving a presentation to your school board, it might be a little different than if you're giving a presentation to a third grade classroom. So it's important to make sure that you know your audience and know what their level is so then you can kind of adapt your presentation to that or and that can go into how fast you're talking, when you're giving pauses, how often you're asking for questions, those type of things. 
the second point is to use the area that you've been given. We'll touch a little bit more on this later when we talk about visuals, but it's important that if you're given the entire stage to use the whole stage. You don't have to stand in one specific spot the entire time and just go from there. Uh, furthermore, always consider your VPR or voice rate and pitch. Excuse me. I'll try to demonstrate that as much as I can for you tonight. We'll see how all that goes. But your voice rate and pitch are important, and we'll go over those here real soon as well. Um, furthermore, be elastic with your speech. Like we were talking about when you're writing the speech, and you can kind of do it whatever way you feel comfortable with, when, when you're delivering the speech, be okay to kind of change it up a little bit. Every time doesn't have to be identical to the one that happened before it. As long as all the context is there, it's okay to kind of be elastic and move and change with what's happening in the audience, what's happening kind of in your surroundings, and be able to kind of just be present in the moment and be elastic with what all is going on. It's always important to remember that there is no perfect speech each time you're going to trip, you're going to stumble over something. But when you get to that point and you start falling, just go ahead, trip with grace, and just keep going. Because, again, there's no perfect speech, just only perfect stumbles that you can go through that way. Furthermore, with that, just go ahead, whenever you're giving a speech, just breathe. It's the most important part. The judges can tell whether or not you're comfortable up there on stage or if you're really nervous. So just go ahead, take a deep breath before you walk out and just go out there and deliver the speech as you have practiced it, or if you have practiced it. Um, just take a deep breath and breathe throughout the speech, and everything is going to go just as it is supposed to. So now we'll jump into the voice rating pitch. So our first one that we have here is voice. So the voice is what the judge is actually hearing. This is how clear you are with each of your words. Are you enunciating each of your words? Are you pronouncing them clearly so that the judge can hear each word that's coming out of your mouth? Or are you slurring things together in a really quick sentence and they can't quite understand what all is happening? This also is, works with being heard. If you're in a really big room, it's important that you're projecting your voice so that way the entire room can hear you. Or if you're in a small room, it's okay to kind of bring the voice down and be more comfortable with the judges and not necessarily screaming at them like you would be if you were on a stage. So being heard is another part of demonstrating with voice. And kind of playing directly off of that is when you're out there, just be proud and be confident. You know, those judges don't know exactly what you had planned. They don't know exactly what you have in mind. So just roll with everything that goes. Be proud and be confident in the practice that you've done so far and know that no matter what happens, you can do your best while you're out there on the stage. So that is our element of voice. Our next element is the element of rate. And this is how fast or slow you're delivering your speech. It's all about how you use the time that you're allotted. So it's important to look at what that time frame is that you have for your speech and then adapt your rate to make sure that you can get through all of your content in that period of time. If you have something that you want to get super excited about and you really want to speed up what you're saying because you're really passionate about it, go ahead and do that, and that just increases your rate of speaking. If there's something that you want the judges or your, your audience to really think about and dig deeper in, then go ahead and just slow down what you're saying. Make sure that your words are very easily heard and that they have time to just absorb every element that you're trying to get across. This is very important when we're talking about numbers and figures. That can help boost your rate. If you have a lot of statistics that you want to be shocking, you can kind of stack those up really big. And then you can also just kind of lay them on them very slow and just kind of pile it on so that way they can understand each number that you're telling them. As that kind of goes, rate should never be constant. Just like being elastic, your rate is something that should constantly be changing throughout the speech. Saying monotone and saying at the same pace throughout the whole thing gets boring for the judges because they begin to adapt and know what's going to happen. They kind of fall into this rhythm and they might stop listening. However, if you continue to speed up and slow down and sound more excited or sound more passionate, they're going to be able to dig in a little deeper into what you're saying, what you're saying, and it's going to keep you them more engaged throughout your entire presentation. That is rate. Now we're going to move on to pitch, and pitch can kind of be the one that gets a little confusing, but you should let the speech determine about the pitch. It goes very closely with the rate, however, the pitch is more how your voice sounds. 
If you are really excited and you want to bring your voice up so everyone can hear you, then go ahead and do that. Much like when you start talking faster, you can raise the pitch of your voice to help draw people in. Again, with pitch, if it's something that you're kind of building upon or it's a shocking figure, go ahead and slow your voice down with your rate, but then also bring it down in the way that you sound, so that way it really kind of hits home and it can absorb within your judges that way. Getting, being monotone gets you nowhere, goes right along with the rate and the pitch. Again, they're really tied together, but being monotone isn't going to get you anywhere. Keep fluctuating, keep changing what you're saying, how you're saying things, the speed and the sound at which you're saying things. So that's going to help them stay engaged the whole time. A good VPR can really make or break a speech and the delivery of a speech. So just be sure that when you're practicing, when you're listening to yourself, you know, maybe you're in a room alone or each time you're delivering it to an audience or if just talking to yourself while you're in the shower delivering the speech, make sure that you're listening to each of these elements and seeing, you know, maybe I should pause a little bit here or maybe I should really get excited at this point and share that with the audience and just keep track of yourself that way. Now, we're going to go ahead and look at visual gestures. So, you can kind of see my hands flailing down here at the bottom of the screen. I love to use hand gestures. They are my favorite. However, it's important that when you're using a presentation or when you're presenting a presentation or a speech, that you are doing this in a way that kind of helps build the speech a little more. Each hand motion and each gesture should be something that helps the judges understand or can visualize what you're telling them a little bit better. As I stated earlier, it's important that we use all of the area that you're provided with. If you're given an entire stage, use that entire stage. If you're giving a demonstration and you have a whole table, set your stuff up so that way each part of that table can kind of be a different step. Excuse me, use the area that you have been provided with. Specifically when this comes to speeches, it gets really kind of monotonous and boring if you just kind of stand there, one spot, knees locked, just spewing out this speech that you have developed for the judges. The best way to really dig down and use the area that you have provided is look and have a spot that you want to talk and you want to deliver your introduction from. And then go from that introduction to wherever your first topic is going to be. Start where that first topic is, really you know, establish that point, establish whatever your, what you want them to understand there, anchor that topic right there, and then move on to another place for your next topic. Deliver that topic in that location, and then so on with each of your points or each of the steps that you have to go off of. By kind of anchoring these points in different areas, it allows you to, if you need to, refer back to something that maybe you said earlier, or you want to kind of like emphasize more on that point, you can point at that area or you can direct their attention over there where you said something or behind you where you said something, and then it helps them remember what all you're talking about. Furthermore, with these gestures and with your movements, don't be afraid to be big. It gets kind of awkward if you keep your hands really close to you and you don't move a lot. So don't be afraid to get big with your speech. If you have a really shocking number, make it shocking. Move your hands. Show them how big and giant this number can be and how much impact it has on agriculture or on your life. So don't be afraid to be big in your hand gestures, in your movements, as well as in your pacing and the steps that you provide within the speech. When you're going through steps or you're going through the points within your speech, it's perfectly all right and it's actually highly recommended that you kind of count them out or you provide a visual gesture that is going to help that judge remember where, they're, where you're at in your speech and what all you're going to tell them about. So as I stated in kind of the general layout portion of the first presentation, we talked about how your intro should really give them a brief overview of what all you're going to cover in your speech. So when you're doing that, if you're specifically saying, you know, point one, point two, point three, go ahead and count those out on your fingers. That way the judges can see how many points you're going to be delivering to them today, and as well as what order you're going to be delivering them in. You can go ahead and use other motions too, like, you know, stacking them together. Maybe you have multiple steps that go side by side, so you can go ahead and lay them out that way as well. So don't be afraid to really use your motions to show them what each of your steps are and then count them out for them so that way they know exactly what is going to happen. As well as make sure that each of these motions, we've talked about a lot of them now, 
make sure that each of these motions come with a purpose. You know, if we're just kind of standing up there flailing our hands because it's not doing anything to our speech, we really just look lost and confused. However, if we're counting our points out, if we're showing where each of our steps are, if we're anchoring what our points are, it's really going to show the judges that you have practiced this speech, that you're comfortable with this presentation, you know exactly what needs to be delivered and how to deliver it in the best way possible. So. These are all kind of some good elements to remember about visual gestures. Visual gestures can also be a way to kind of keep the judges engaged. It helps them see something. They can kind of relate what you're moving to to the words that you're saying. It kind of links everything together. Moving on now to visual aids. Some of these contest areas that we talked about last time allow you to use visual aids and strongly encourage you to use visual aids. And some of them, on the other hand, don't ask for visual aids or don't allow you to use visual aids. Here specifically, I know it says that um, in public speaking, you are only allowed to use a visual, or you are the only visual aid, excuse me, you're not allowed to use any other PowerPoint, nothing else behind you. So it's important that you go back to those gestures and make sure that that is your visual aid, that you're showing them your speech through your motions. If you found a topic that you want to present in a demonstration layout or another presentation that allows you to have a, something going on or some other visual aid with you, the aid should add to the presentation. It shouldn't distract from the presentation. You should develop your aid off of what your speech already says. You should develop your speech off of what you want as your visual aid. So it's important to make sure that there's more information that you're saying than just what is on your slides or is on your poster board or whatever you have as a visual aid. The visual aids, in this sense, not to distract anyone, should really be left super simple. Use a very clear and readable font that can be read from a large distance away. Limit the color pattern. Like we were talking with kind of how many points you should include in a, spe a speech, three to five colors is really a good limit to keep on a visual aid or on a poster board or those kind of things. Once you get more colors in there and there's lots of other things going on, it again tends to distract from the actual context that you're trying to present in the visual aid as well as from the speech that, or presentation that you should be giving as well. If you decide to use a PowerPoint or a Prezi or some other you know, technological presentation technique, make sure that you're very modest and simple in the animations, the fade in, the fades out, those kinds of things. If you have massive swirls going on around behind you or big you know, collages that are happening, it again will distract the judge back to what's happening behind you, whatever's happening on your board, rather than what you're actually telling to them. And in each of these presentation types, you're going to be judged more off of what you're saying than what your visual aid or what your poster board says. So if that judge is paying more attention to what your poster board or your PowerPoint says, then they're not really going to remember what your speech was all about, and that's what they're supposed to be judging you on anyway. So you want to make sure that that is what they're hearing. And do not, do not, do not just read word for word, point for point off of whatever your visual aid is. It should be there to kind of help you keep track of where you are in the speech or in the presentation, allow you to kind of look at what's next and what you need to say coming up. But you should always have supplemental information then besides what is just on the presentation part. The presentation is just there to kind of help the judges keep track and to give them a little more information than what you might tell them. That it shouldn't be word for word, the both things coming out from the same area. All right, and that is all I have for you. I'll pass it back over to Tony. Okay, so one of the uh, things that's really hard to understand is what the what it's like at the state fair. And so for 4-H, um, a lot of individuals will uh, participate at the county level and then they'll advance to the state fair. And one of the really uh, nervous items that they get nervous about is what is what's the environment going to be like? And so 
For the interactive demonstration, you can see here a picture of what the uh, interactive demonstration area is like. You can see that there are four different stations that are set up, and it's in a place where, it's, uh, where there's lots of traffic uh, in going through the exhibits. And so we just have uh, the 4-H members participating in the interactive demonstrations um, staying at one of those four stations. They will um, provide their uh, demonstration. And again, the interactive demonstration is where you're just teaching one simple skill and not a series of steps like you would in the regular demonstration contest. And so the interactive demonstration, we're going to have people uh, stopping by. We're going to encourage the, the public to stop by and get involved so that you can talk one-on-one -on -one and show them that real simple step um, to do uh, with your interactive demonstration in just uh, you know a minute or less is, is basically what you're targeting. You, and you will stand there and continue to do that for about a 45-minute time period. We will have a judge, even though this this uh, area of verbal communications is not a uh, competitive event. The interactive demonstration area, we do want you to um, get some feedback, and so we do hire a judge to be here uh, and to, to watch you, and they will give you some feedback at the end of that 45-minute time period. Here are two different examples of what it looks like uh, in the exhibit hall up on the second floor for the stage uh, where demonstrations and public speaking are, are happening. And so here's where the demonstration, here are two different sets of demonstrations. One is using um, the PowerPoint as a visual aid and the other one is not. And so you basically have the entire stage there. You can see that it's a large PowerPoint screen where uh, the audience can see what's there. But again, you're going to want, as Tyler, excuse me, as, as Scott Tyler said, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you're conscientious about the font that you're using uh, so that you're using contrasting colors uh, and it's not all blending in and, and people can actually see it because there is a lot of natural light coming in through the windows that are in the second floor of the exhibit hall. So again, try and, try and uh, work with that as best you can and try it out in a well-lit area at home before you uh, come to the state fair. But there are two different sides to this stage, and uh, so while one person is, is doing their uh, demonstration for the audience, then the other person, the next person that's up will be uh, in the background uh, on, the, on the opposite side of the stage getting all their stuff ready so that when one person finishes and moves their material off to the stage, the next person can just move their things uh, out onto the stage and we can get going uh, right away and, and move right on. Here's an example of the illustrated talks that are done over in the rabbit and poultry, I'm sorry, these are done in the Ag Court building uh, for the rabbit and poultry projects. And so uh, you can see that it's the stage there where, uh, again, the audience is out there. Uh, you can see that there is a easel for um, poster boards. If you want to use that as your uh, visual aid, there's a table. And this uh, young person here has some rabbits that they're going to be demonstrating with. And then you can also see that there is a, a video monitor and so you can also um, hook up a computer and utilize that as your visual aid as well. Again, um, the difference between the illustrated talk and the demonstration is that the demonstrations are done in the exhibit hall building and there are no live animals permitted on those, whereas uh, the illustrated talk is very, very much uh, like a demonstration except it's uh, limited to both rabbit and poultry projects and live animals are permissible in, these, in, in this uh, category. And so then we also have uh, the, the public speaking, and uh, public speaking is just the, the, uh, the stage is set up and uh, there's no screen up there. You have the entire stage that you can utilize for public speaking as well as uh, the other uh, informative 4-H presentations and um, the uh, professional persuasive presentation. And so the next question is, what's the judge going to look for? And on the resource page of the website uh, for the verbal communications, we do have the scorecards there. And I would suggest that you uh, very much uh, be familiarize yourself with those scorecards before you even start writing your speech and or, or your demonstration so that you can know what the judge is going to be looking for. And so essentially, on regardless of which uh, verbal communication event you're competing in, um, the judge is going to be looking for how well you know your topic. Um, have you prepared? Have you practiced? Have you showed demonstration doing that? How comfortable are you on stage speaking to an audience? And what is your stage presence? Are you 
um, having some, having good eye contact. And even though you're on the on the stage and it may be up above where the member, to me, where the audience is sitting at, they're still going to be um, concerned about eye contact. Are you looking at the audience or are you looking at the uh, back of the auditorium? And so, you know, they're also going to look at, you know, think at the end, does your presentation flow well and does it make sense? And did it make sense from start to finish? Did you start with your uh, a clear introduction of telling the uh, audience what you were going to talk about or what you're going to do? Did you actually talk about it and or did you do it? And then finally, did you close it up by uh, reminding everyone um, what those key points were? And then they're also going to be uh, looking at the, the and evaluating you on your enunciation and your talking uh, as far as your speed and whether people can understand you. Are you talking too fast? Are you talking way too slow? Um, are you being able to use your voice rate and pitch to be able to keep the audience's attention? Or are you just simply up there talking in a monotone voice and uh, getting everyone absolutely bored to death by the end of those three to five minutes that you're talking? And then finally, attire. Um, it, it, this is not an event where you have to dress up for, uh, but it is an event where you're going to need to be able to, to present yourself in a presentable manner. For example, in the public speaking event, would uh, jeans and a t-shirt be appropriate? Absolutely not. Would um, slacks and, uh, and a polo shirt be appropriate? Yes. If you want to put on a tie or a, or a coat, um, that would be fine. If, ladies, if you want to, uh, and girls, if you want to be dressed into a, into a nice outfit, um, that is fine. Uh, you know, uh, jeans, probably not, but dress slacks and a, and a top would be fine, or you can go uh, and, and utilize a, a dress. Uh, but a formal dress would not be uh, necessary for the, any of these events. So attire is going to be very important. And so we talked about uh, the awards and recognition. Some, you know, the interactive demonstration is a non-competitive event, and so everyone is going to get a, receive a blue ribbon at the state fair who competes in, the, in that uh, category. All of our other events, whether it be public speaking, demonstration, interactive demonstration, illustrative talk, um, uh, the uh, informative 4 H presentation, the uh, professional persuasive presentation, these are um, competitive events and everyone, uh, regardless of whether you're competing as an individual or a team, will receive a blue, red, or white ribbon based upon the quality uh, that you've done uh, with your presentation. Those who have earned uh, blue ribbons, then uh, those from, from those blue ribbon winners, uh, the individuals that have done just an exceptional job uh, will be uh, receiving a merit ribbon uh, for that, or uh, in some counties they call that an honor ribbon, but at State Fair we call it a merit. And so then uh, the top three um, blue merit winners uh, in each category uh, will receive, for individuals, will receive an a, uh, invitation to participate in the State Fair achievement trip. And for those that have team categories, the top team that has the uh, blue merit um, category, excuse me, blue, rib, blue merit honors uh, or blue merit awards, that top team is going, also going to receive an invitation to participate in the State Fair Achievement Trip. And so at this time, we're going to stop for questions to see if any of you have any. And I'm going to look through the chat box to see if there are any questions. And so at this point, I'm not seeing any. So go ahead and uh, uh, we're just going to pause for another minute um, to make sure that we do get some questions answered if you have any. And as you're typing in your question, make sure that you send to all participants. And I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And so again, just some reminders, uh, you know, to be sure to look at the rules and the resources that are listed on the um, communication webpage, uh, the, and you can see the uh, webpage listed there. Again, contact your county extension educator or your school speech teacher. Uh, they can be some great resources to be able to help you help you with your preparation. If you're having trouble coming up with a topic, they can help you um, come up with some different ideas. If you once you have it written, um, they they'll be glad to uh, um, help review it. Uh, and then also once you're ready to to give your presentation. Again, as Skyler said earlier, practice, 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 and uh, practice it to your family members, practice it to your county extension educator, practice it at school, uh, practice it to uh, a, a, a 
youth group at church, uh, feel free to uh, contact your civic groups in your community, and, and uh, they will be more than happy to have you come in and present your presentation um, to them uh, during their meetings. If you have questions, feel free to contact myself or Skyler, and you can see that our emails are listed there. And again, uh, we encourage you to have fun and learn from this experience and um, get the most out of it. And uh, you know, once you once you do it the first time, um, you know, there's always going to be room for improvement. And so we hope for you, hope that you will continue to um, engage in the public speaking and demonstration activities and other uh, verbal communication events and that you'll be able to utilize this experience to help build life skills that uh, you can attain through our 4-H program. And so with that, we want to thank you for your participation this evening. A recording of this will be put on our um, State 4-H website if you need to refer back to it later. And so with that, have a good evening, and thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>